William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. I wonder if murderers, like other people, worry about their income taxes. When they make a killing, for example, do they always report it, or do they just list their victims under uh, buried assets? The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. I'd been to a movie. It was about a private eye who pinned a wreath on a murderer after an hour and a half of swallowing dry martinis, wrestling amorously with youthful blondes, and wearing a succession of the best press suits ever seen off a tailor's dummy. I decided to walk home. I wondered if there was a special license that a plain investigator like me could get that would make me like martinis and make blondes like me. It was close to one in the morning. The air was raw and cold with the tang of metal in it you get in New York. The afternoon slush had hardened to ice underneath your feet. And I decided you'd probably need more than a license when I saw her. Halfway up the block, an apartment house lobby spilled some light out into the street. Enough light so I could see that she was young, redheaded, with that pale, almost transparent skin redheads sometimes have. The guy with her had his back to me. It was an old scene. He was probably making a play for a nightcap up in her apartment. She shook her head and moved into the doorway. He moved after her, maybe for a goodnight kiss. It was none of my business. I started walking. He must have tried for more than a kiss and wound up with a slap in the face. He came stumbling backwards out of the doorway, hit the ice on the pavement, and went down. I heard the door slam behind her. Either she hadn't noticed him fall or she didn't care. He wasn't moving when I got to him. A pavement can be pretty hard when you slap it with the back of your head. I tried shaking him, but he wasn't playing. I lifted his head, thinking maybe that might help bring him to, and then I eased it back onto the pavement. I couldn't be sure if the skull was broken, but by that time I was sure of something else. He'd quit breathing. Not a nice way to wind up a date with a pretty redhead. I thought she might want to know about it. There were a dozen names on the bellboard in the small lobby. Any one of them could have belonged to the redhead. I pushed the supers button. I tried the inside door. It was locked. A well-run apartment house. Supers probably need their sleep as much as anybody, but they frequently don't get it. Uh, what do you want? I'm sorry I had to wake you. There's been a small accident. Yeah, what kind of an accident? Somebody slipped on the ice in front of the building. What are you, a lawyer? No, no. Nobody could have slipped in front of the building. I put plenty of ashes on the ice. It ain't slippery. Well, come on and look for yourself. Okay, but if you think you've got a case... I don't know the man. It's none of my business. Well, if he thinks he's Come got... on. And he's not thinking of suing anybody. Uh, maybe he ain't, but if you've been a super as long as I have, you know they're always looking for a chance to stick a, an insurance company. A, a... You uh, still think he's looking for anything? Why, the, the guy's dead, ain't he? Yeah. Well, that's terrible. Uh-huh. You better call the police. Tell them to send an ambulance down, too, on the chance we're not such good diagnosticians. Okay, sure. And while they're doing that, I... I might as well break the news to the redhead. Huh? He'd brought her home, said goodnight to her when it happened. You mean some girl in this building? Yeah. Maybe uh, 20, pale skin, red hair, pretty. You, you couldn't mistake her. Mister, maybe you couldn't, but there ain't no girl like that living in this building. The skin on my back crawled a bit when he let me have it. Then I shrugged it off. 
maybe she was staying with some people in the building. The super wouldn't have to know about that. Maybe. Yes, officer, he's laying out in front, just like he fell. Yeah, well, there's some guy here who's seen it. Name's Craig. Yeah, we ain't tried moving him. Okay, officer. Well, I'll be right over. Good. Uh, about that redhead. Look, I've been super here for seven years. I know every family in this building. they all been here for years. Well, she might be staying with one of them. There was some burglaries in the neighborhood the last couple of weeks. I checked on all the door keys. Today, there was nobody staying with nobody. Well, it might have been a sudden... She wouldn't have had no key. She didn't have to have one. She could have pushed a button and... No. No, huh? I was too close. She'd have to wait for somebody to click the door catch down in the lobby. I'd have seen her. Well, maybe she ducked out again. Uh-uh. So what does that mean? I don't know what it means. Except maybe it's going to be quite a while before she finds out what happened to her date. It didn't take long for the police to arrive or the ambulance. They move pretty fast. They always do. They've had experience. And on this trip, they also had Lieutenant Rogers of Homicide. Barry? Yeah, Lieutenant. You're not curious enough. The uh, police doctor said the guy was dead, didn't he? He's dead. What should I be curious about? About why I came down on an accident case. I figured maybe it was on account of your college education. What would that have to do with it? I wouldn't know. I never went to college. You're being a big help. What do you want me to be helpful about? I came down because when the report came in, your name was mentioned. So you decided I was involved. Aren't you? No. You got my story. Yeah, you just happened to be walking. You just happened to notice the redhead and the corpse and so on. That's right. It's hard to believe. Why? Because I'm an investigator. I don't have a right to witness an accident. Not an accident that happened to Walter Bawley. Bawley? That's the corpse? That's the corpse. I've heard the name before. Sure you have. Walter Bawley's a big man. Or was. In the Midwest. In New York, he's just dead. It could be a coincidence. He came here to collect a debt. Owed by who? He'd run a string of buggy joints here for years. He sold out maybe six months ago, went to Detroit. But he had trouble getting paid. So he came back. You never get paid now. Who'd he sell out to? We've got a couple of guesses. Any names attached? Mark Wheeler, Joe Carson. Neither of them are redheads. No. Barry, the boys went through the building. No redheads on the premises. It's a pity. I've got a thought, though. Yes? Yes. Let's take a walk through the building. All right. Any uh, particular direction? Yeah, along the hallway here. Should lead to the back door. Oh? Which should be locked. Well, let's see. But is isn't. The super's going to have to do some explaining. There have been burglaries. The super's okay. Take a look at the lock. The lock? It's been forced. Yeah. That's happy news for a local locksmith, perhaps, but uh, where does it fit in? I don't know. It might tell us how the girl got out of the building. But that's not the problem, is it? It's how she got in that bothers me. How much does it bother you? Not much, I guess. Because it still remains an accident. Doesn't it? Walter Bawley went to the morgue, Lieutenant Rogers went back to headquarters, and Barry Craig bought a drink. Here's your poison, Craig. Thanks. Say, Mac. Yeah? Suppose a man had an opinion about a horse. Where would he go to do something about it? There's a cigar store on 3rd. The owner would be glad to listen to your opinions. Or the clerk over at the Armstrong Hotel. No, no, no. That's for small opinions. I've got a king-size opinion. Real big? Tell you, Craig, I wouldn't be surprised if you was to get a phone call first thing tomorrow. Well, that'd be too late. I get nervous carrying big bills around. Who knows, I might lose them before morning. Say, Craig, there's a new hot spot opened over on the west side. Yeah? Someplace in the 40s, I think. They call it the Three Aces. Got a wonderful floor show. Three Aces. Carson would be one, Wheeler another. Could be the third. If I've been to one doctor, I've been to a dozen. Never did me any good, though. 
Some days I can't hear a thing. Okay, Mac. Doesn't matter much about that third ace anyway. He's been trumped. The three aces was over on the west side, someplace in the 40s. They weren't letting the night die without a struggle. Everything is satisfactory, sir? Sure, except for one thing. I'm lonely. I'd like to have a man-to-man conversation with someone. Someone named Joe Carson, say. Or maybe Mark Wheeler. I'd even talk to Walter Borley. I'm very sorry, sir, but I've never heard of... Ever seen one of these before? Well... Pretty shade of green, isn't it? Nice picture of Andrew Jackson on it. Go on. Have a good look. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. I, uh, I will see if one of the gentlemen you mentioned happens to be around. You do that. Yes, sir. Mind if I sit down? No. How do you like the floor show? Not bad. One of these nights, I'll come back and look at the floor. That's very funny. So-so. The waiter tells me you wanted words with my partner or me. The waiter's right. You wanted those words quite a few bucks worth. I figured it was the only way I'd get them. I don't like to see men throw money away. I'm Carson. Fine. Uh, Speaking of floor shows, uh, one of the regular girls is out tonight, isn't she? Which one? Well, we never got around to throwing names, but she describes easy. Around 20, redheaded, with a very white skin. Yeah, now you mention it, she's not working the show tonight. Too bad. I was looking forward to seeing her. Well, that can be arranged. Well, uh, arrange it. Okay. (coughs) Only one thing. Yeah? She might not be in the right mood. See that door next to the bandstand? Yeah, I see it. If she's in the right mood, somebody will open it for you. Thanks. Don't mention it. It took him maybe five minutes to find out if the girl was in the right mood. If that's what he was finding out. Either way, at the end of five minutes, the door next to the bandstand swung open. Somebody outside the door had done the swinging. I didn't have a chance to see who. I wasn't sure that I was playing it the right way, but I couldn't think of anything else. Nobody paid any attention to me. I crossed to the door and looked through it. The little I could see was a stretch of dirty hallway. But if you're a confidential investigator, you're not too fastidious. I walked through the doorway and shut the door behind me and turned, but not fast enough. Back to Barry Craig in just a moment. And now, back to William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. I didn't know how far I'd gone and how long I'd been away, but it took a while coming back. And even then, I didn't try opening my eyes or moving my head. I had a feeling it was going to hurt. You had him sapped. Why? Look, Wheeler, he came here asking for us. He fed me a phony routine about a redhead with white skin. Nina. Yeah, Nina, being part of the floor show. I don't care. You don't know all of it yet. I've been through his pockets. You know who he is? Look, Carson. A private eye named Craig. Now, what would you have wanted me to do? Invite him in to go over our books? That might have been safer than what you did do. Huh? I just got a call from one of the newspaper boys down at headquarters. Borley was brought in a few minutes ago. Borley at headquarters? Wasn't his idea. The apartment they took him to was the morgue. I don't believe it. You You're sure of this? I'm sure of it. Well, what's bad with that news? It ain't no secret he'd come to town to collect. Off us. With him dead, who do you think the cops are going to be looking for? Maybe I shouldn't have started nothing with this character here, but... Wait a minute. When did Baldy get it? Around one. It's two now. 
If what you're handing me is true, the cops should have already been visiting. According to what the press was told, Borley died in an accident. So what are we worrying about? The cops have handed out phony releases before. I don't get it. Either you want to make trouble or... Or you know better than the press. Where were you around one o'clock? That's a funny question coming from you. What do you care? Oh, forget it. Maybe I'm getting jumpy, but... How does this guy fit in? And Nina? Nina ain't been around the club all night, which means she don't fit in. Him? I don't know. Maybe he heard about Borley, too. I've been thinking of that. Maybe we don't take no chances on... Maybe. He's out cold. Never know what... Okay, Carson. Get a couple of the boys in. Now you're talking. Sure I'm talking, but... I could be talking myself into the chair. So far, I'd been doing fine with my eyes shut. But that wouldn't last much longer. Carson's boys would be glad to shut them again for me if I opened them at the wrong time. So I had to open them at the right time. Keep an eye on Sonny Boy. Yeah. Sonny Boy. Pretty soon, no Sonny Boy. Wheeler was the nervous type, a floor pacer. Seven steps to the door, about turn. Seven steps to the desk, about turn, and the same routine repeated. The time he'd give me a quick look was when he passed me on the way to the door. On the fourth step. The fifth step would have to be my play. It would have to be fast and reasonably quiet. But how fast I could get off the floor, I didn't know. I'd find out. Step to the desk. Turn. Now back. The fifth step. Remember? Two. Three. Four. Five. <coughs> That's my forearm. Locked around your throat. Things you learn in the <coughs> army. I increase the pressure an ounce, Wheeler, and that's all. Want a broken neck? That's nice. Now turn the gun around in your hand. Hold it by the barrel. Yeah. Poke it backwards toward me. That's the way. Thanks. <coughs> Gun butts make a funny sound hitting a man's head. I didn't stop to laugh like mad. Carson and a couple of pals would be dropping in at any minute. There was a window behind the desk. I could have stopped to raise it, but I was in a hurry, and besides, I wasn't anxious to save a penny for the three aces, so I... went through it fast and wasteful. The alley wasn't any cleaner than the hallway had been, but it was darker, and it didn't lead to a dead end. Lieutenant Rogers. What? Oh, hello, Barry. I hope I'm not intruding. That's a nice hope. I need a little help in a lot of hurry. Important? I don't know. It could be. Even a giraffe couldn't stick out as much neck for you as I do. All right, we're in a hurry with a police escort. To get where? The uh, three aces. One's been trumped, but the game's not over yet. <laughs> Got their instructions. Front and back of the club's covered. We go in. If you don't mind. I don't mind. Three, three aces. Yeah. Good evening, gent. Yeah, I'm back again. I brought company with me, though. Lieutenant Rogers, homicide. I... I... Save it for your lawyer. Take us to the office. I, I will ring. No, no. We want a personal guide. That way we can be sure it'll be a surprise. Move, huh? Yes, sir. That quiet authority always gets them. Ah, uh, the badge. Don't be modest. A couple of square inches of tin isn't that impressive. I, uh, I don't know what Mr. Wheeler will... Nobody passed the law. You have to know anything. Now knock. If a man answers, tell him you're checking the wine list or something. Ye uh, yes, sir. Open the door. No. Yeah. I'll explain the reason why to you. 
If anybody inside has the idea of trouble's coming and is preparing to blow down anyone in the doorway, you'll be the one. I won't. Sure you will. All right. Mr. Wheeler. Move over, Buster. That's Wheeler? Yeah. We met earlier. I had the pleasure of knocking him down with the butt of a gun. He got up? Yeah. Sat down behind his desk and proceeded to blow his brains out. Looks that way. But I'm stupid. What do you mean? I don't know why he killed himself. You'd escaped? He knew you'd come to the police? He was through in the bookie racket? He still had a skin, his own. Boys like that are very fond of their skin. It'll be a hard thing to prove anything. Looks like suicide. Sure. Just like Borley's passing on looked like accident. It was an accident. No, Trev. Not an accident at all. The police guard around the club got us nothing but a handful of small crooks. Carson was conspicuously among those missing. We asked lots of people for his home address, and lots of people didn't know it. We uh, got the whole department on it, Barry. They'll turn him up. Maybe, maybe not. He couldn't have made it out of the city. He didn't have to. Meaning? The setup back at the club goes for suicide. You will never be able to prove otherwise. As for the accident... That you call murder... There's only one way you can tie him to it. The girl. We did dig up a name for her. Nina West. Pretty name. A pretty girl. And right now, very possibly a dead girl. Oh, you can't be sure. Put yourself in Carson's place. She's the one who can send him to the chair. With her dead, you've got nothing. Not even... And get this, Trav. Not even a motive that would stand up in court for his killing her. I went out and took a look at what had happened to the night. The sky was getting lighter. The winter sun would be sneaking over the tops of the buildings in an hour or two. Not handing out much warmth, but a promise anyway. I started walking. I didn't try to think. Because the only thoughts I had on tap weren't very pleasant. Nina West wasn't the kind of girl your mother hoped you'd marry, but she was young, pretty. I didn't think she'd known what was going to happen to her date. If she'd lived, maybe someday she'd have walked into my office in the old building on Madison Avenue and asked me to find a lost dog for her, and suddenly walking wasn't fast enough for me. I needed a cab fast. I needed to go someplace fast. Only a hunch, but it was the one chance we had, the one chance Nina West had. If she'd gone where I had to get to within minutes, my office... Hang around, I might need you. I didn't bother with the elevator. I used the stairs. They're faster. It sounded good to me, the hunch. Say the girl hadn't known what Carson was letting her in for. She found out late. Volley already did. I slowed down, heading down the hallway to the office. It might be smarter not to announce an arrival. She'd have realized she was in trouble. Gone home? No. Carson knew where that was. But I'd barged into the club. Carson was busy with me. She might have heard him use my name. Maybe. Maybe she'd think of my office. Because a girl like that wouldn't go to the police. The lights were on in the office. I hadn't left them on. Someone was inside. Someone or a, a couple of someone's. Had Carson tried her home, found her out, tried half a dozen other places she might have gone that he knew of, and then wound up with the same conclusion I had? There was no way to play it fancy, which was just as well. I'm not the fancy type. I hit the door hard and went to the floor. She screamed, but the shots drowned her out. I wound up against the desk, Carson to one side of me. The girl cut between us and got the bullet Carson had meant for me. He didn't have another try. No, don't! The gun! I'll, I'll drop it, see? Thanks! The rest is going to be for the fun of it! It didn't last very long. He dropped his hands. You can't hit even a Carson with his hands down unless you're a Carson yourself. I didn't qualify. We 
We uh, got a deposition from her before she went into surgery. Carson's all washed up, Barry, but uh, the kid's got a good chance. Fine. He had it laid out beautifully. Nina was told of Borley take her home to the building where you saw them. For a gag, Carson told her. Carson broke into the building through the back door and was waiting in the lobby with the inside door propped open. He slugged Borley across the back of the head hard enough to break the skull, pushed him backwards. Then he and the girl scrammed through the back door. The perfect murder. Except for... For what, Barry? The ashes on the sidewalk, for one thing. Borley couldn't have slipped on the ice. The other thing? The girl got into the building only one way. Somebody had to be waiting there to let her in. That made the word accident smell. Hmm. Let's go home, huh? Sure. Hey, look, came the dawn. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator.